Hey, it's Tony from Adafruit, and this is a stream on using Circuit Playground with Bluetooth Low Energy to control the NeoPixels on Circuit Playground. So basically from your phone or tablet or like a wireless device, you can use a really neat little color picker and then change the colors of the pixels. So this is kind of a follow-up. I did a previous stream, which I'll link to in the description below when this goes up on YouTube, where I looked at using uh, the Flora Bluefruit LE module, which is a Bluetooth low energy radio, and how to connect that to a circuit playground, and then play with like the basic pin input and output modes where you can do like digital inputs and digital outputs. Uh, so in this stream, I figured, you know, let's follow up and let's look at how we can use the NeoPixels on Circuit Playground. Because remember, if you're not familiar with Circuit Playground, um, and by the way, I'll put a link to a good series of videos on the uh, uh, description when this goes up on YouTube so you can look at more info. But Circuit Playground's the all-in-one electronics kind of learning board. Um, let's see, I should have one near me. Um, I, I always have a Circuit Playground. Here we go. Oops. There we go. So Circuit Playground, uh, basically it has all kinds of components. So there's NeoPixels around the, uh, the ring of this thing. Uh, there's an accelerometer, there's uh, a light sensor, little microphone, speaker, all kinds of fun little components. And so I've been exploring how to use those over a Bluetooth low energy wireless link. And you need a little bit of extra stuff. So we'll just kind of dive in and I'll show you uh, that, you know, just with one extra component, basically, you can connect it to Circuit Playground and then start controlling it from your phone using an application. So we'll dive in and I'll jump, um, maybe we'll jump to the workbench real fast. Let's go to uh, this view here. So uh, basically what I've got here is the circuit playground, obviously right here. And then this thing, a little bit of glare, unfortunately on it. This is the Flora Bluefruit LE module. So this is a little Bluetooth low energy radio and it connects over a serial connection. So that's the uh, yellow and the green alligator clip wires. They're going to a serial connection on the circuit playground. So just like the Flora board, circuit playground has a serial um, or hardware serial connection that you can connect uh, a transmit and receive line to. And so that hooks up to the Bluetooth radio. And then they just send little text commands. So the circuit playground can send, uh, they're basically AT commands. Like if you remember a modem from back in the day, it can send little commands to the, uh, the blue fruit radio that says, okay, you know, uh, advertise yourself as a device so that something like, you know, your mobile phone can come in and start talking to it and connect to it. And then once the device is connected, uh, the Blue Fruit Radio can send commands to Circuit Playground that say, hey, you know, uh, somebody clicked this color in an application or, you know, certain commands and things can be sent to it. And so I'll show you, that's how you can control the board wirelessly. Uh, so we'll go in maybe to the main view now. So we'll see uh, everything. Oops, let me jump back to this. And, uh, and hopefully the video is okay. I'm noticing CPU usage is a little high. So if it stutters a little bit, uh, just kind of bear with me and, and we'll see how this goes. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, so the, the topic of this video, I actually did a little guide that was just published today. So I'll put a link up on the uh, description or down in the description when this is on YouTube. So you can go to this guide and this should be everything you need to know to start using the Flora Blue Fruit module, this little thing with the Circuit Playground. And it shows a couple examples. So I show the pin input and output mode, which I actually did a video on earlier. So if I click this, you'll see this uh, actually shows the video inside of here that I did before. And this talks about how you can use our iOS or our Android app and it has this little pin control mode. Real cool, go check out that video if you wanna see more details on that. Uh, good for like hooking up little digital devices, you know, like a PIR motion sensor. You could hook that up to one of the uh, uh, pads on Circuit Playground and then detect when that's a high or low signal and actually see that in the uh, app here so it'll tell you that pins change state. Or if you have like an LED and you wanna turn it on or off, uh, or maybe like a relay that you wanna turn on or off, you can control those just by directly uh, modifying the pins here. But for this video, we're gonna look at NeoPixels. So like I mentioned here, um, in this guide, it walks through exactly what you need to do to, uh, to set up the code that I'm gonna show you here. And it's actually just an example that you need to load in the Arduino IDE. So it's real simple. Uh, and then the wiring, like I mentioned here, so this guide, uh, it, it explains exactly what you wanna do. You can just use alligator clips. You don't have to do any soldering. That's the really cool thing about Circuit Playground. You know, we wanted to make it easy for beginners to use. So, you know, step one is not solder all these components together. Step one is just grab some alligator clip wires and just hook them up like this. So, you know, it's, uh, I actually do notice you get a little bit of noise. So like I'm using these long 12 inch uh, alligator clip wires where I probably should be using some of the short ones. Like we have these little three or four inch 
uh, alligator clips. These would be ideal. Uh, I've noticed you, you can get a little bit of noise when you get long wires like this, uh, but it's, it's not the end of the world. Things still work, you know, you can still learn from this. Uh, but basically you just hook up the two components. So it's pretty straightforward. You know, there's the serial connection has a transmit and a receive pin uh, that you need to hook up between these two devices and be very careful. It calls out right here. You know, you hook up the TX pin from one board to the RX pin of the other board. So don't hook up TX to TX or RX to RX because basically that TX and RX on Circuit Playground is specific to Circuit Playground. So it's Circuit Playground's transmit line or you know the output serial data. And that needs to go into the RX or the receive line for your Flora Blue Fruit module. And, and same thing for the RX line, uh, that should go to the TX line and vice versa. So just be careful, you know, usually you hook up like the same name, like ground to ground, 3.3 to 3.3 volts. Uh, but in this case, uh, you need to make sure you get the serial connection correct. And then one extra thing, uh, you need to hook a digital output. So I picked pin 12 to the mode switch on the uh, Blue Fruit LE module. And this just kind of tells the module whether it should be in a data or a command mode. So the sketch can kind of ch uh, change between those. And there's actually a button on the device. So there's a little button up here, a slide switch uh, that you probably can't see super well, but you need to make sure that's up in the data position also. And so I put a little red warning in here, make sure that you flip it up into data, uh, but that's all you need to do. It's that easy. Then the Arduino setup is pretty straightforward. Um, you just need to make sure that you can program Circuit Playground. We've got all kinds of guides and details on that. So, you know, follow these links. Um, make sure you can upload like a basic sketch before you dive into stuff, you know, test things in isolation. Uh, and then you also need to install the Blue Fruit LE NRF51 library. And so you should be able to search for that in the library manager. So if I go into sketch and manage libraries, and I think if I just search for Blue Fruit, then it should come up as uh, one of the options. So if I filter to Blue Fruit, then yeah, this is the library that you want. So you can see I've got the version installed already, uh, but install that library. And that's actually all that you need for this NeoPixel example. So I put it in as a uh, new example inside of this library. So if you go now in Arduino, after you've installed that library, go into the examples, and this just got uploaded yesterday, so it might take a day for this to get into the, to the Arduino library manager, uh, but there should be a new CPlay NeoPixel Picker example. And so this is really similar. There's already a NeoPixel Picker example. Uh, this one's just specific to Circuit Playground. So I set it up so you don't have to change anything in this sketch to make it work. Uh, and let's see, I'll close this uh, thing behind here. So there's a little bit of config at the top, but this is all kind of optional stuff that you can change. So if you want, by default, it will factory reset the board, which is smart. So it's gonna factory reset your floor Blue Fruit module uh, because the Blue Fruit module can have some state, like you can change the name that it advertises itself as. Uh, and so it's good to do a little reset that just puts it back into its default state. So then the sketch can modify it as it pleases and it knows kind of what state it's in. Um, so it doesn't hurt, you know, you leave this to one. If you, if you want to disable this for some reason, you can set it to zero uh, and it's not a, a huge deal. Number of pixels, this is 10. Basically it's going to use the NeoPixels on the Circuit Playground board. So there are 10 of those, but eh, maybe you want to change this. Maybe you only want to light up like two or three of these. Uh, so you could uh, you can adjust this. And then brightness, this is a value from zero to 255, which just controls how bright the pixels are. So I set it to 255 as like maximum brightness, but if you wanted, you know, you could crank this down to like 100 or something like that, uh, and it'll be a little less bright for this. So a couple of useful things. Uh, and then one other thing to know, so if you didn't use pin 12 to hook up the Blue Fruit module to the mode button, then you're gonna need to modify something. So in the bluefruit config.h, this is a different tab. It's actually a separate file, a header file that, that's included with this sketch. There's this bluefruit uart mode pin. And I've set this to 12 because that's how I have it hooked up with the white wire right here. But if you change this to like, you know, six or nine or 10 or one of the other digital outputs, make sure to modify this because it needs to know which pin is connected to those. Or if you're adapting another bluefruit um, LE sketch. So like you saw, there are all, all kinds of other examples in here for the NRF 51 library. If you want to make it work with Circuit Playground and the Blue Fruit module, then all of these sketches for the most part, all the examples follow the same convention where they have a separate little header file that's your configuration because these uh, Blue Fruit modules 
Some of them you can hook up in multiple ways, like over a spy connection, a serial connection, a software serial connection. So in this case, we wanna make sure we're using hardware serial. And so you do need to go in for those examples and change this UART mode pin. Most of them I think start out with like negative one, which just means it's unused. But in this case, you wanna set it to the, the pin you're using, uh, number 12. And then also if you're modifying the examples, um, like this example, I've already set it up so that it's using hardware serial. Um, but the other examples kind of have commented out all of the different options for the using like a spy connection or a serial connection. Make sure that you use the hardware serial connection. So if you're curious, like just look at this sketch, the Cplay NeoPixel Picker as an example of here's how you set up a hardware serial connection uh, for the Blue Fruit Library. So that should be it. So I'm just gonna hit compile on here and uh, it should compile because this is what's checked into the GitHub repo. Okay, good, yeah, that works. And then uh, I'll make sure I've got Circuit Playground selected as the board and then it's connected to my computer. I'm hooked up to the USB port and it can detect it here. <clears throat> so let's click upload and we'll program this. And you can kind of ignore, like Arduino has all kinds of warnings, unfortunately, for uh, these spurious.github folders, which eventually will be fixed pretty soon. Uh, okay, cool, so this just uploaded. Now you won't really see anything. Everything looks like it's normal. Now what you need to do, you need to get your phone or your tablet or your mobile device. Uh, it has to be iOS or Android. So the, you need the Blue Fruit LE Connect application. And back in the guide, I uh, link to it here. So I, I think I mentioned it like on the Pin.io and the NeoPixel page. Uh, you know, we have links to the applications here in the different app stores. The apps are pretty similar. I'm gonna use Android just cause that's the, the phone that I have here. Uh, but it, uh, it works pretty much the same on iOS, uh, the basic functionality. Okay, so I've got my phone and I'll see if we can see this. Uh, maybe let's jump back to the workbench view because that'll probably be easier for this. There we go. Okay, and so I'm, I'm gonna, uh, maybe I'll remove my headshot from here too because we don't really need that. So there we go. And we'll move the mic over a little bit. Okay, cool. So I've got the, uh, the application here. And you can see here's the Blue Fruit LE app. So I'm gonna open that up. And oops, it opens in a different mode there. There we go. So you can hopefully see that. So notice it's detected a device called Cplay underscore BLE. And so that's Circuit Playground, Bluetooth Low Energy. Now, sometimes you might actually see Adafruit Blue Fruit LE or even like Cplay ATZ sometimes. Um, that just depends, like I said, if you get some noise with these long cables, it can kind of mess up the serial connection a little bit and you might see some weird behavior. Um, but generally you'll see a UART capable device probably called Cplay BLE and then click the connect button. And what that's gonna do is, is connect to the device. And so it gives you a few options in the Android app you wanna pick the controller mode. Now it's a little confusing because there is a NeoPixel mode, but that's a separate, more advanced NeoPixel control mode. We're using a real simple basic one that's actually in the controller mode. So uh, select controller and it's gonna connect and then notice like this little blue light comes on. You might not be able to see there. You can kind of see when the device is connected. Um, and the first time I connect, sometimes it's a little flaky. Like I said, this serial connection can be a little sketchy. So. If it waits too long, uh, I'm just gonna close it and then we'll open this back up again. So let's connect again. And we should see that we connect here. There we go, there it connected. So, okay, so now my phone, it goes into this controller mode uh, and this gives you a bunch of options. You can actually send sensor data from your phone to Circuit Playground. We're not gonna use that right now, but that could be a cool future example for this. Uh, you wanna go down though to the color picker mode down at the bottom here. So if I click color picker, now it brings up kind of a familiar thing. So this is the typical little color picker control. So you can select a, a hue, uh, make sure to slide like the saturation and the values. I think those are the, the values down there uh, so that you get you know the colors. This is previewing the color that we're gonna do. And when I click send, then hey, look at that. It lights up with the, the color that we see there. And you can change the hue. So if I wanna go like red color, I can do that. I can crank the brightness down a little bit. So it's you know a little bit less intense for that, so pretty cool. You know, it's just a basic little color picker. Um, simple little example, oh, come on phone, there we go. Ah, it's I'm holding it like right, you know, just at the right angle where it wants to switch into landscape, unfortunately. So I'm trying to keep the glare off of it. Uh, but the, you can see this works pretty well. So, you know, what's happening here is I have a connection wirelessly using Bluetooth Low Energy. And so if you're not familiar, in the guide, I link to an introduction to Bluetooth Low Energy. So check out that little guide uh, from K-Town. But basically Bluetooth Low Energy, it's just a wireless 
a serial connection in some ways or a data connection effectively like i th my phone can send any type of data so you know you might have used bluetooth with like headphones um or you know maybe sending contact info between phones and things like that uh so bluetooth low energy it's just an evolution of bluetooth um uh, slightly different use case like it's not made for talking to headphones and sending like video and audio data it's meant for sending like little control packets like this that say, okay, you know, change the color of this thing, or, you know, here's a sensor value, something like that. So it's, you know, like the name implies, it's, it's optimized more for low energy usage. It's slightly different from Bluetooth Classic. But the cool thing is it's a protocol that you can use uh, yourself in your application. So like the Bluefruit application we're running here is running some code on Android that uses the Bluetooth radio. It connects to the Bluefruit module here. And then, like I said before, the Bluefruit module talks to Circuit Playground over this serial connection. And so when the Bluefruit module receives a command from the app here, you know, like changing the color, then it just relays that command to Circuit Playground. And then it's the code inside of the sketch that's listening for that command and sees, okay, now I've been told to change the color. And it goes and adjusts the color like that. So that's kind of what's happening here. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Now, there's one other thing you can do in this sketch. If you go back to the... Uh, the control mode, the controller here, oops, it keeps going uh, back to the landscape, there we go. And if you scroll down to the control pad mode at the bottom, and you hit that, you get kind of a, a game pad interface. And I, I put in a little bit of extra functionality. So if you use the left and right arrows, you can press these, and notice as I press the right arrow, these, uh, these lights here kind of go away. And then if I press the left arrow, they come back, and I can actually keep pressing it and turn these lights off here. You can go all the way if you want. You can go all the way down to nothing lit up or just a few lights lit up like that. Uh, so I kind of figured, you know, maybe you wanted a way to just kind of control which pixels are turned on or off like this. So it gives you a little bit of flexibility. And you can go back and you can change the colors if you want. Um, and it's going to remember, you know, which pixels you had lit up there. And you can go back and then change the, uh, the lit up pixels like that. So real simple little cool kind of you know example again of just wireless control uh, hooking up the Bluefruit radio and then uh, having a sketch that listens for that. So let's go back and I'll show you the code for this and a little bit more detail. We'll, we'll run through it real fast. Um, so let's see, let's go back to the main view. So let's see, okay, I'll move the mic back. Okay, cool. So uh, I'll run through then the, the example code for this. So that's basically all there is the functionality to this uh, NeoPixel control sketch. You know, real simple, but hopefully something that you can look at and give you some ideas of, you know, what you might want to do yourself with Bluetooth Low Energy. Uh, so here's the, the sketch again. Oops. Oh, my cat is uh, she just knocked something over. So <laughs> this is the fun of live uh, live internet. So well, let's take a look at uh, the sketch here. So like I said, I basically I modified the uh, existing NeoPixel picker example from the NRF library. So if you look at NeoPixel picker, it's pretty similar, um, but I just made a few tweaks to it. I put in a little bit of extra logic like I, sh I showed, you know, the left right buttons also uh, controlling things. But uh, all it does, so the, the first stuff here, you know, you have to create this Bluefruit LE UART object. This is the NRF51 library that we have. So this thing has all the logic of talking to the Bluefruit. Uh-oh, here comes the cat. <laughs> there she goes. <laughs> She's uh, quite a, a Circuit Playground fan, I guess. So anyways, though, uh, this class implements all of that control logic that talks to the Bluefruit radio. So it knows, you know, what, how to send commands to it, how to receive uh, commands from it, uh, that type of stuff. And so you just call functions on this BLE object to interact with it. Um, there's a little bit of extra stuff in this sketch. Uh, it, it has some functions for parsing these command packets that it receives back. It actually has a whole separate file here that has more parsing logic that I won't really get into, um, but it, it makes it a little bit simpler. And I'll show you what we mean here. Um, in a second, I'll show you some, like the raw data that's coming back and you can get a better idea of uh, how this works. Uh, I made a little function here that called light pixels that basically controls lighting up these pixels um, and it does it using an offset. So that's how I do the movement. You know, as you noticed, um, I'll go back and I'll change some of the lit up pixels. When I use that control pad interface, so if I, you know, move a few pixels down like that, what's happening here is I'm actually changing so I'm, I'm rendering 10 pixels, but I'm changing the offset to where I start rendering. So like right here, this is where I start rendering, like pixel five or six, and I'll render 10 pixels around forward. And obviously, you know, there's only like five pixels that I can render right here, and then there's five more that are kind of off screen or not rendered. So I just, I ignore those five pixels. 
And so like when I'm pressing this button to say, okay, move left or right, I'm just changing this offset value. So I'm either increasing the offset or decreasing the offset. And I can send that offset to a, I can set it to a negative value. And so that's what happens when I go all the way around this way. Now my offset is negative. So I'm starting rendering way back here with some off-screen pixel that you know doesn't even exist here. And then I render 10 pixels and it just so happens these last two happen to be um, you know rendered there. So that's basically all I'm doing. You know, I wanted to keep the logic simple so that I'm not like having all this complex logic of like how many times did you press the button and where should I start rendering and stuff. You know, I just said like I'm gonna take an offset. I'll let it range between negative 10 and positive 10, and that just changes where I start rendering the pixels. And then I put a little check inside of here to say, so I, I just do a for loop starting at my offset, uh, going through offset plus 10 pixels, you know, number of 10 pixels. And you know, the naive thing would just be, okay, just light up each of those pixels. But I do a quick little check to make sure, okay, make sure that my current pixel is greater than zero or equal to zero and less than the number of pixels that I have. So like make sure it's a value from zero to nine or you know one of the actual pixels on the board. So that's how it kind of clips off if you're above or below the range of renderable pixels. Um, so that's all that this function does. You know, it just takes in a color and an offset to render these things for. Uh, and that's what happens there. Now the setup, this is called, you know, when the sketch starts, most of this is boilerplate. This is stuff that comes from the uh, Blue Fruit LE sketches. So things like, uh, you know, I added, obviously, we initialize the circuit playground library, we turn off the pixels, and you can all, this is where you uh, initialize the brightness of the pixels in here. Uh, and then we initialize the Bluetooth radio, the Blue Fruit module, basically. Uh, we do that factory reset stuff here. Uh, we disable some stuff like echoing command uh, output. Here is where I actually I changed the name of the device. So you notice that it was uh, advertising itself as CPlay BLE. So that's just using this gap dev name uh, command. So we're basically sending like a raw command uh, to the device here. So, uh, and actually hang on one second, I will be right back. A uh, little bit of technical difficulties here, so one second. Okay, hopefully we're back. Uh, a little bit of fun. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, hey, you're doing live internet, sometimes packages get delivered or things like that happen live. So, you know, I had the uh, technical difficulties thing there for a reason. So I uh, finally got to use that. Uh, anyways though, so we're back. Uh, and like I was saying, uh, this little command here, this just changes the name of the device. Uh, check out the Blue Fruit LE guide. I think I linked to it. Uh, in the uh, the guide that I have, this that guide goes into way more detail about all these AT commands and how you can control the Bluefruit radio. So all kinds of cool options in there. Uh, but I figured let's give it a nice name. So you know we'll change the name here to CPlay BLE, uh, and then basically it just sits and it waits for a connection here. So it goes through and says, okay, you know, check am I connected. Uh, and so that's waiting for the phone to make a connection to the device there. And then once it connects, it goes into this data mode and then your main loop starts running here. And so we'll go into the main loop uh, real quick. And the way this works, so it's just uh, waiting to receive data from the Blue Fruit uh, module here. And so when your phone does, sends a command, like when you're using the, uh, the color picker, for example, that just comes back as a packet of data. And so this read packet command is actually asking the Blue Fruit module, okay, have you received any data yet? And it grabs a packet of data when it's available. Uh, and then my sketch here actually parses out that data. And so let's actually look at the data that comes back. So you can see this commented line where we print out the raw data. So let's upload this sketch. Let's uncomment this and see what happens when, uh, when we upload it. So we'll press upload here. 
And what this is going to do, it's going to print out the raw bytes and it's going to print them in hex. So they're not super easy to understand, uh, but I'll show you the basics and what's happening. So I uploaded it and then let's open up the serial monitor uh, at 11.5, 200 baud. And then I'll connect with the phone app real quick. And uh, let's see, let me go back and we'll close that. And let's open up the app. Okay, so I'm gonna to connect to the device in controller mode. So I'm connected now. So you can see it said switch to data mode. That's just where it was waiting for a connection right here. And now it just switched the data mode. So now I'm in the main loop. And now let's see what happens. I'm gonna change the color. So I'm gonna send a color command. And uh, uh oh, here comes the cat again. She's gonna walk by. Uh, anyway, so, so notice I just sent a color command and you can see that some data appeared here and I'll, I'll change the color. Let's go to a different color. Let's go to like, you know, pink color. So we received another command here. And so this is the output of, oh, there goes the cat. This is the output of this uh, print hex command here. So this is printing out the packet of data that we received here. And so you can see these are the raw bytes. Now this is in hexadecimal. Uh, and so what you'd want to do is actually look up uh, an ASCII chart. So the uh, American Standard for Communication or something like that. Let's let's take a look at this. Uh, the cat's on the keyboard. So it's a little bit challenging here to, all right, ASCII chart is what we want to see. So let's check out an ASCII chart and we can actually decode these and figure out what uh, what they mean. So. Uh, let's, let's ASCII table.com. That seems like a pretty safe bet to have an ASCII chart. Uh, okay. So, and this is nice. So they show both in decimal and in hex here. So notice, uh, our values. So we have hex 21, 43, and then FF 5 F7. So let's look these up. Let's see. Hex 21 is the character exclamation point. So that's kind of the start of a control packet. Uh, and then 43, let's see what that is. So uh, hex 43 is an uppercase C, so exclamation C. And then the data that follows after this, this is actually the RGB color. So this is the red, the green, and the blue component. These aren't character values. So like you can look up like FF and they don't even show FF because that's not a part of the uh, lower ASCII, you know, like FF would be like, I guess this blank character here, but it's not actually a character to interpret this as. These are just binary bytes. Um, and then this last byte is actually a checksum, uh, which is like, um, I think it's you add all these bytes together and take the inverse XOR of it or something. I forget exactly how we compute it, but this is basically a way to check that you receive the right data here. So if there was like any corruption, it could detect that and know that this is a bad packet. But that's all that's being sent here is just a, you know, a few bytes of data, an exclamation point, a C, which identifies this as a color change packet, and then the actual data for the color change itself. And I'll show you something else. So if I do the uh, left and right buttons, so if I go back to the uh, control pad mode, and so if I do like, you know, here I just press the right button and I pressed it again. And notice it's actually sending two commands here. So when I press the button down, it just sent this command. And when I let go, now it sent another command. So you're actually getting a button press and a button release command that are sent to you. And you can decode these yourself too. So OX21 exclamation point. So that's the start. Uh, OX42, this is an uppercase B, if I remember correctly. Yeah, like the B character right here. Uh, and then after that, there's uh, OX37 and OX30. Uh, 37 turns into the number uh, seven. So it's it's not actually the value seven because if it was hex seven, that would be the bell character, which isn't like a printable character. So it's actually the number seven, but with its ASCII code. Um, and then three zero and three one, these are zero and one if I remember. So yeah, three zero is zero and three one is one. And then the last one is that checksum again. So this is basically saying, okay, this is a button packet, like the exclamation B, and then three seven, this is the number of the button. So it just so happened that like the left button or the right button was button number seven on the control pad. And then the next one is, it's a one if it's pressed and a zero if it's released basically. And that's not a byte value of zero, but the actual ASCII character zero or one. Uh, so that's all that these control packets are doing. You know, it's basically my phone is sending these five bytes or so to the Blue Fruit Radio and the Blue Fruit Radio is sending it to Circuit Playground. And then the code in the sketch here, you can see this is where I do the parsing. So I look to see, 
you know, uh, this packet buffer is basically what read packet uh, will uh, save the value into. Uh, and then so inside packet buffer, I look to see, okay, because value zero in the packet buffer, the first character is going to be that exclamation point. So I should probably check that, but the code doesn't, you know, it just assumes that it's getting a good packet. Uh, but then I look at the next value, so position one, which is going to be this position right here. If that's a C, an uppercase C, which it is for these color packets up here, that OX43, then I go in and I grab the red, green, blue values as the next values inside the buffer here. And I don't look at the checksum here. I think if I remember correctly, the read packet function in here actually does uh, the, the, uh, the checksum checking. Yeah, so here it's doing some logic where it's just you sum up all the bytes and then you uh, take the inverse of it and that should match the checksum byte that was sent there. Um, so that's all handled for me by this read packet, luckily. So I just need to pull out, you know, here's the color data. And I just save those into some global variables here. So I save my color state. And then same thing for the button presses, left and right. I just look to see, okay, what type of packet is this? If it's a B, then I know it's a button packet. And if it's a button packet, then I just hard coded in and said, okay, look for exclamation B705. So B705 is the packet I would expect when you press, I think it's the left button and release it. So it's the release packet. Cause remember it's that zero character means you release the button. Uh, so if I see the left button release, then I just change that offset value, like I mentioned before. So I just increase or decrease that offset that I use for rendering. Uh, and then same exact thing for the right button. So I just look for B80. So button eight is the right button, if I remember correctly. I might have those reversed, it might be the left button. Uh, but either way, you know, when I release that button, uh, then I'm gonna change my offset again in this way. So pretty straightforward, pretty simple. You know, I'm just looking for these command packets. I'm using the mem compare function. This just compares the packet buffer against this string value. And then I have to tell it exactly how many characters to compare. So just check these first five characters. And since I know this packet is never gonna change, like, you know, for a button release, it's always gonna be these command bytes. I know the checksum is always gonna be this value. So I don't need to like compute the checksum, you know, here, I'm just gonna hard code it in basically. Uh, and mem compare, it returns zero when the values match exactly. Uh, and so that's what I wanna check for here and just change those offsets. And then after I do any offset changes, I just constrain them. I make sure that my offset falls within the negative to positive uh, number of pixel range here. So that's this handy little function in Arduino where you can give it a value and then a minimum and a maximum value. And if this value is outside of that minimum or maximum range, it will set the value to that minimum or maximum. So real easy, handy way. Um, and then just after I've received a packet, I basically, I know that I either got a color packet or a uh, byte control packet. Even if I didn't get one of those, uh, or button, uh, rather button control packet, if I, you know, even if I didn't get one of those packets, I just go ahead and I call the light pixels function using the current color and the current offset uh, that was changed. And so remember that light pixel function up at the top, that's what actually changes the NeoPixel color here. Uh, so that's all there is to this sketch really. You know, it's, it's not too crazy. So it's just using the fact that our Bluefruit application, we have kind of this standard for control packets that we've created. Uh, and uh, it's all documented in the guide that I linked to from uh, the, the guide here. But, you know, looking at like these color packets and these button packets, and we have packets for all kinds of other stuff, like all the phone sensors, you know, your gyroscope data, your compass data, magnetometer, uh, that stuff can be streamed from your phone to the device. So that's kind of cool. Like, you know, Circuit Playground already has an accelerometer on it, but it doesn't have, you know, like a gyroscope or a magnetometer. So your phone does though, or, you know, most phones have those. So that's kind of cool. You could maybe hook this up to your phone, you know, almost like a Pokemon Go type thing. You know, you could have like a, a wrist mounted circuit playground, have a magnetometer on your phone, uh, and then maybe have circuit playground like pointing, you know, where North is or something like that. So cool, fun ideas that you might start thinking about, you know, just using the fact that you hook up a little Bluetooth radio to circuit playground and even just using alligator clips and stuff, this doesn't have to be fancy. Uh, you can start doing these cool kind of phone interactions and it doesn't have to be super complex. Like I would definitely say that this is a more complex Arduino sketch than, you know, most getting started things. Like this is obviously much more complex than like blinking an LED, but this is for like going the next level if you want to start playing with uh, more interesting things like Bluetooth low energy, you know, you, you've exhausted all you can do on Circuit Playground itself. Now add on a wireless radio and start adding more functionality to it. 
Uh, so that's it. So I'll wrap up the stream. Um, I think that's all I wanted to cover here. And I'll jump back to the main view. So if you have questions, uh, throw them in the chat right now. And uh, we can see if we can answer them. Let's jump back here. So and apologies if it stutters. The video sometimes stutters. This is like a Wirecast issue that I'm still trying to sort out, unfortunately. Uh, so it's uh, the audio is usually good. So you just have to deal a little bit. One of these days, I'm just going to like recreate this project. Uh, someday I should do like a stream on how to stream. That, that, would, that would be a good stream, how to use Wirecast uh, potentially, because it's a beast of a program. It's really funny. Uh, you know, I've talked to a lot of people. I've been out to like Maker Faire and Hope and all these conferences and stuff this year. And I talked to so many people where it's like, you know, they went to school for like video stuff or like, you know, audio production and all these things. And now they're trying to get into programming and coding and making stuff. Whereas I'm in the opposite boat. You know, I went to school for computer science and hardware and got a degree in that. And nowadays I need to know how to do video and audio and like actually edit videos and do live production of things. And so like we're in the same boat, but just completely swapped. You know, I'm learning this whole new world where I've got this familiar world of programming. So it's just funny, you know, there, you're always learning. There's always something new to uh, to learn in, in uh, no matter what you're doing. So uh, let's see, oh, someone is asking, is, uh, is Wirecast free software? No, unfortunately Wirecast is not, it's 500 bucks. Uh, but it's, it's the best there is. Uh, maybe I should do a stream someday on how to stream, or at least the tips I've learned. But don't let that put you off. Um, I started with OBS, Open Broadcast Software, or Open Broadcaster Software. It's what a lot of Twitch streamers use. Uh, I liked it a lot. It works great. I just had, I ran into a lot of limitations with it. Like, it's not made to do the type of stuff that I want to do where, like, I'm switching multiple views and like playing videos in line with live stuff. So it's great for like, if you have a couple cameras and you want to show your desktop and a camera, it's perfect. Like that's, it's all you need. So start with, and it's free. So start with OBS. It's really nice. Uh, and then Wirecast, it's nice, but you know, don't do it until it's like maybe more of a professional thing uh, for you. So, uh, but yeah, that's uh, that was one question. Um, let's see. So I think people are wondering like what's on Circuit Playground. Yeah, I'll, I'll put a link down below in when this goes on YouTube to some of the more intro to Circuit Playground things. But Circuit Playground, it's got all kinds of components. It's got temperature sensor, light sensor, uh, microphone. It has NeoPixels. It has a little speaker on it. So all real nice and all pre-assembled, pre-soldered. You know, it's made to be all in one uh, electronics learning board. So. Uh, someone was wondering, have you gotten Visual Studio Code to connect to your Raspberry Pi? Uh, I've, I did a video on this a while back, maybe a month or two ago. I did a little quick look on uh, using it. And yeah, I did use it. Um, I, I can't remember how I got it to connect. Um, I think I had to use a tool. I think there was a plugin, if I remember correctly. So I'll, I'll, maybe if I remember, uh, but search for uh, Raspberry Pi Quick Look Visual Studio Code. And I, I just looked at it um, and it, it looked nice. I was impressed. Like they've uh, they've made a great little free IDE. It's from Microsoft um, and it's like, it's more of a text editor. It's not a replacement for Visual Studio, Visual Studio the integrated development environment, you know, this full like desktop app development environment. It's more of like, you know, you're writing Python or JavaScript or even C or C++ code. And it, you know, you get a nicer little editor for you for that. So uh, I, I liked it. I was impressed. It worked out well, I thought so. Uh, and I think that's it. So I think that's it as far as questions go. So oh, someone was mentioning um, you could add like a haptic vibration motor to Circuit Playground. That'd be kind of cool. That's a good idea. Add, add one of those to uh, one of the digital outputs on the board and then uh, you know use the PWM controls to, uh, to make it buzz. So that could be a fun thing. And with the pin IO mode uh, on the Bluefruit app, you can actually control the PWM output of some of the digital outputs. So you could potentially do that over Bluetooth Low Energy, like have a little buzzer that you control with that. So. So that's it, okay, cool. So I'll wrap it up then. Uh, this is Tony from Adafruit. So this was the live stream on Circuit Playground, NeoPixel Bluetooth low energy control using the Bluefruit LE module. So we just walked through how to connect it and uh, check below in the description, there's a link to a guide that walks through exactly how to do this, gives you the step-by-step. -step. Um, it also shows how to use this pin control mode for it. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, so uh, check out youtube.com slash Adafruit. You can see this video, all kinds of other videos and projects. 
twitch.tv slash Adafruit. That's where I like to do live streams like this. I do a couple live streams every week. I do on Mondays a quick look at Raspberry Pi software, and then on Fridays an in-depth uh, kind of programming related stream. So this Friday I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to make it the last video in the Raspberry Pi Cat Laser series. Uh, so there's a little bit of work I need to do before that one still, but I've, I have a laser that you can control over a web page, and I'm going to try and let people over the internet control it so they can play with my cat, who you saw earlier on the stream. Uh, so that's uh, check that out Mondays and Fridays, and then I'm trying to do more streams, like uh, you know this little Circuit Playground stream kind of midweek, so uh, keep your eyes peeled for stuff like that. Uh, but otherwise, uh, until then, you know, this is Tony from Adafruit. So like, comment, subscribe, you know, let us know that this is good info and we'll keep uh, churning out the good content. So until then, I'll see you guys later. Thanks.